But the reason that this is all so rich, that WWE would try to fuck with AEW by going to its sponsors, is that it happened the same week Vince McMahon brushed off the idea that AEW was any kind of real competition. WWE reported its second quarter earnings this week over $265 million in revenue, $29 million in profit, right? Big numbers. But what made headlines was a question that was directed at Vince McMahon about AEW, asking whether he sees them as competition and whether he sees the need to counter them by investing in more talent since they may eventually compete against each other for media rights. Is it a situation, this person asks, like the late 90s, where a rising tide lifts all ships? This is what Vince McMahon had to say. It's certainly not a situation with rising tides, because that was when Ted Turner was coming after us with all of Time Warner's assets. That was a different situation. AEW is where they are. I really don't know what their plans are. All I know is what our plans are. I don't consider them competition in the way that I would consider WCW back in the day. Not anywhere near close to that. I'm not so sure what their investments are as far as their talent is concerned. But perhaps we can give them some more. And his voice sort of trailed off at that point where it was hard to understand him. Because he's fucking old. It happens to all of us. So, Slick Nick Khan stepped in, and he tried to clean up Grandpa's answer a little bit. He's he's a smooth operator, this guy, I gotta say. When you really listen to him speak, this Nick Khan, that's probably why he's doing more and more of the talking, and Vince is doing less and less. But Khan said they consider everything, and I've heard him give this answer before, they consider everything to be competition to them. Not just any one company, and that even sleep is their competition. If that's the case, then sleep is winning, at least on Monday nights. Sleep is like WCW during the Monday Night War, 83 weeks and counting. I I will defend Vince in this one regard, and only one. When WCW was breathing down his neck, WWE was near bankruptcy. In 1997, the company came very close to going under. That's where the famous story comes from that Vince went to Bret Hart on that big 20-year contract he signed the year before and said, look, I can't afford to pay you on your contract. And I'm going to breach it, and I'm going to give you a permission slip, basically, to go talk to Ted Turner and Eric Bischoff and negotiate something with WCW. I can't pay you. Things were very bad. You know, Jim Cornette has told the story, and I don't know if this was in 97 or 96, but it was somewhere around there. When they were really cutting costs, he told the story was so bad that in the tower, in Titan Tower, they had to remove the water coolers. They came in one day and the water coolers were either gone or they were being taken out. Things were bad. WCW was crushing them in the ratings. They were outpacing them on pay-per-view buys. They were stealing their talent. New guys were jumping ship to WCW every week, it felt like. Vince McMahon's back was up against the wall in a way that it had never been before. He probably felt like it was life and death for he and his company, because it was. Today, WWE is a juggernaut. They just generated $265 million in revenue. They have billion-dollar deals with Fox and Peacock and NBC Universal. He is not threatened by AEW in the same exact way that he was threatened by WCW. That is true. I believe that he believes that. Eric Bischoff, he openly talked about wanting to put WWE out of business. Tony Khan is not going around talking about how he wants to put WWE and Vince McMahon out of business. Quite the opposite. He talks about the forbidden door. I mean, my God, they they talk about this forbidden door so much. But they talk about the forbidden door and wanting to do business with all different promotions. And I could just picture Vince McMahon probably looking at that and just laughing. And, and looking at this guy as some kind of lightweight. He's not cutthroat enough. He's too nice. He's too soft. But that does not mean that they are not still competition. And that WWE does not view them as such. Of course they do. Of course they do. You know, the comment about, well, maybe we'll give them some more talent. It, it is such an arrogant fucking thing to say. 
Maybe you wouldn't have to give them the talent if you actually knew how to use them properly in the first fucking place. And for this to come of all weeks, with the Bray Wyatt news breaking, I wonder what the WWE roster thought, hearing a comment like that as they fired another one this weekend, due to budget cuts. But yeah, let's make a joke about it. AEW is 100% competition to WWE because they are going to be competing for media rights in the next three to five years. Especially if AEW can keep up the momentum that they have been building of late. Even if AEW can only grow Dynamite to, a, let's say, a million and a half viewers a week. Let's say they never hit two million. They never topple Raw, even though the gap is closed a little bit, especially in the demos. But Let's say they hit a million and a half at some point, and that's about as good as it gets. Okay? And they never overtake Monday Night Raw. My prediction is that they're going to double or triple their TV rights fees regardless, after this current deal with Warner is up. Whether it's Warner that renews, or it's a totally different company remains to be seen. They're going to double or triple their money. Content is king. Think about how awful some of these WWE shows have been over the past few years, mainly on Mondays, and how their numbers have shrunk. Look at the numbers year over year. And they still got a billion dollars each. It's because networks are paying stupid high numbers for sports rights. So there's not a doubt in my mind if AEW is getting, what are they getting? It's, I think it's just under 45 million a year, right? It's somewhere in that range. $175 million is what they got on their current deal. They'll easily double or triple that next time. Because now they are a proven commodity. Before, Warner took a leap of faith on them. They had no track record. They're a startup. And so far, it's paid off for them. They should have no problem getting more money. You don't think WWE doesn't view them as competition? They also draw from the same talent pool. How big do you think the pro wrestling talent pool is relative to other sports, baseball, football, basketball, worldwide, globally? I mean, I know you have a lot of independent shows and people who put on a pair of tights and think they're a wrestler, but realistically, relatively speaking, the pro wrestling talent pool is not exactly gigantic. There is a finite number of people that are in that pool. WWE and AEW, they are drawing talent. They're scouting talent from the same pool. And when AEW signs a talent that WWE may have had an interest in or may have had their eye on, you don't think they don't view AEW as competition for that talent? They didn't see AEW as competition when they started doling out high six-figure deals to re-sign people like Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder or Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson? Do you remember what they were even doing with those guys on television at the time? If they were even on TV? You expect me to believe that they did that because they valued their talent so much. Give me a fucking break. There is a, a bravado or an arrogance to the way they talk about these things, at least publicly. I'm not saying they should be out there praising AEW, but there's just a certain arrogance in the way they talk about these things that is going to come back to bite them on the ass sooner than people think. It's like when they used to deny that UFC was competition. Oh, they're not competition. One's a real sport and the other one isn't. You don't think WWE wasn't paying attention to the dates of those UFC pay-per-views and staying as far away from them as possible because of the audience crossover between the two? They can publicly deny it all they want, but their actions say otherwise. Vince McMahon may be able to fool Wall Street into believing these things because they're too fucking stupid to know any better. They just see the numbers. They don't know from any of this other stuff. But to everybody else, these people aren't dumb. They see things for what they are. 